Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. I hope you can hear me okay. This is Ed here from the Reuse One team. I am delighted today to introduce our master class as hosted by the Southern Waste Region. It is lamp upcycling. Um, we all have bottles that we bring to the bottle bank. It could be your favorite bottle of wine. It could be your father's favorite bottle of whiskey. Wouldn't it be lovely to turn that into a functioning thing that you can have around the house? It's a brilliant gift idea. We're getting close to Christmas. So uh, that's one thing that if you pick up how to do this, uh, you can you can try that. And uh, I tell you what, you're in for a treat because Emmett is absolutely fantastic. Emmett from Copper, Copper Creation. I'm going to hand over to him in a minute. But first, I'd like to bring in Polly McDonough, the Waste Prevention Officer for Southern for the Southern Region Waste Management Office. Um, I'd like to introduce Polly and just say a quick hello. So welcome, Polly. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you, Ed, for that lovely introduction. I'm really excited as well because I'm a huge fan of Emmett from Copper Creations, and I think we're going to have a really exciting masterclass. As you said, Ed, we've all got beautiful bottles that we sometimes get. It could be a water or a juice bottle or an alcohol bottle that means a lot to us. And the idea that you can create something for a special part of your house, making a beautiful lamp out of it is a fantastic idea. So we're delighted that we have Emmett and it's really exciting. It's gonna be a great workshop for everybody that's involved um, because Emmett is really creative around reuse and that's what we're trying to promote here with Reuse Month. Now, for everybody watching and listening in, Emmett has also kindly offered uh, one of his lamps as a prize um, to all the people that are taking part today. So anyone who asks a question in the chat will automatically be a, um, entered into a raffle and the winner will get this fabulous creation that Emmett has done. It'll be chosen at random and the lamp will be available for a collection from the Rediscovery Centre where Ed is based in Ballymun in Dublin. Now, also, if you decide to make your own lamp, please do. We'd love you to do that. But also, if you can tag My Waste Ireland on social media, because we'd love to see what you've created and to keep promoting uh, reuse throughout October and obviously beyond that. So no more from me. Enjoy the workshop and I look forward to seeing all of your questions and good luck. Enjoy it. And thank you, Emmett. Thank you very much, Pauline, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, and so, listen, without any further ado, let's uh, let's fire along to Emma there. So, Emma will go through, it'll take about 9 10 minutes, and then we'll have a, a live Q&A where we'll answer most questions uh, at the end. We'll answer as many as we can. We'll try and get through some of them by text uh, during it as well. So, straight away, I can see some questions come in. Keep them coming in, guys. Victoria, you're already entered into our competition, um, and you've asked, will there be any chance of doing this in real life? Yes, hopefully. That's a great idea. So if there's enough energy and if people want it, we'll make it happen. Don't worry about that. Um, so yeah, first entry into our competition. But um, uh, please keep the questions coming throughout. And as I said, we'll deal, deal with it at the end. And uh, I'll, what I'll do is I'll kind of serve over time at that. Hope you enjoy. Hi, good morning and uh, welcome to today's workshop. My name is Emmett Bosme and my company is called For Creation. That's with K's. And I'd like to welcome you today to a workshop which we're running here um, to make a, a lamp or light from an old bottle or an old spirit bottle. Um, this is in conjunction with Reuse Month, which is a really great initiative run by MyWaste.ie. Um, it's a, an initiative for the whole month of October. There's lots of online classes and different events happening. Um, make sure you can get over to MyWaste.ie and check it out. It's definitely worthwhile. Um, so today we are going to try and reuse something. So we're going to turn this old gin bottle, um, a nice Hendrix gin bottle, which a lot of you will be familiar with. Um, obviously, it's empty. <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no gin left um, in this one. So um, today we're going to try and turn this into um, a lovely light. Like so. Um, and it turns on and off too. So that's the goal for today's workshop. We're going to go through creating the lamp from start to finish. Um, and so I suppose I give you a little bit of a rundown of um, me. My name's Emmett. My company's Copper Creation. Um, I'm based in Dublin One in the Chocolate Factory, which is a creative community. Um, there's over 20 different creative businesses in the building. 
Um, I run a little uh, design shop in the ground floor and I have a studio also where I operate from. Um, I take old disregarded items from the heating and plumbing industry um, and try and turn them into innovative and new exciting products. Um, I have a full range of lights, lamps, uh, homewares, tableware, candelabras, different items for your home. Um, and check my website out, it's coppercreation.com. That's Copper Creation with K's, K-O-P-P-E-R-K-R-E-A-T-I-O-N, which is here, <laughs> .com, um, to see the full range. Um, so today we are going to try and, um, as I said, create a nice new light fitting from this old gin bottle. Um, also, as a nice addition to it, um, at the end of today's workshop, we're going to have a Q&A section, so questions and answers. So I suggest everybody who has any questions to get them in and we're going to offer uh, at random, whoever gets randomly picked can win the lamp that we hopefully create today. So it's a decent prize and I suggest everyone get their questions in. Um, and it doesn't matter any questions you have, big or small, get them in and at the end, uh, the guys are going to pick out a winner. So it's a really good prize. Um, I suppose, okay, so we get, let's get to it. Before we start, um, I think the most important thing is to talk about health and safety and to make sure we have all of our PPE or personal protective equipment. Um, so a good pair of earmuffs is essential because we will be doing some drilling. Um, a nice pair of safety gloves um, and obviously a pair of glasses, which are important too. So, you know, I can't stress highly enough to people the importance of health and safety. Um, we are going to be operating power tools and doing some wiring and stuff too. So if you're not comfortable with anything you see today in today's workshop, always seek out a professional or someone with experience to give you a hand or do the job for you. Uh, don't attempt anything that you're not completely comfortable with. Um, and yes, always ask for, for assistance if you need it. Um, so yeah, so let's get started. Um, this old Hendrix gin bottle, um, which um, as I said before, it's all empty, it's washed out. Um, I'd always recommend whatever bottle you're going to use, give it a good wash out, let it dry. Um, especially if you've got kind of clearer bottles, like this one here, you know, you want to make sure it's fully clean on the inside uh, and any res residual alcohol or contents are removed. Um, with the bottles, um, from my experience, the gin and whiskey bottles are heavier. They're a stronger construction um, and, you know, they tend to drill better. Um, if you're using some wine bottles and some of the thinner glass, there's a higher risk of the bottle cracking. Now, I used to always say it was sort of one in 10 that would crack, but lately with the rise in popularity of gin and spirits like, like gin and whiskey, it's predominantly um, those types of bottles I'm using, and it's very rare that you get a crack. Um, you will on some wine bottles. The glass is a lot thinner, so you just have to be careful in that regard. Um, so that's the bottle we're going to try and use. Um, the first step is drilling a little hole in the back. Um, I have brought one which I've pre-drilled before here, just to show you what the finished kind of hole will look like. So you can see there, it's a 10 mil um hole on the bottle um 10 mil is my preferred sort of size when you'll find with all lighting stuff um a lot of the fittings and a lot of the connectors are 10 mil um so you know you, you can make it smaller but i just feel 10 mil is is it gives you more options with things and um, so some of the tools we're going to use i suppose the, the workshop's going to be in two stages first stage is is drilling the bottle and getting that prepared. The second stage will be wiring. Um, so there's a different set of tools for each stage. Um, so for stage one for the, for the drilling, um, I've tried to make this as straightforward as possible using um, things that um, you, know, you will find at home or most people will have in their homes. Um, I could have had complicated jigs and rigs and drill, drill presses and expensive bits but just as it's my uh, reuse month, we want to try and um, give people an idea of household objects that they can use or tools that they can use to do this. So that was the aim of, of today's workshop, to give you, make you feel confident to even give it a go um, or try it with the assistance of someone who's experienced in it. 
Um, so first thing I did with with the bottle, um, you want to have a strong base to work with. So what I've done is made a small jig here. The bottle fits in. It's not snug completely. There's a little bit of room. Um, all this is is an old sheet of um, ply which has been recycled. Um, and then two lengths of two by four, which has also been recycled with a little adjustable piece on the inside. I think the base plate here was approximately 300 mil from top to bottom and 250 mil across. Um, this is totally dictated by the size of the bottle you're going to be using. So if you've got a bigger bottle, you'd need a bigger dig. Um, one thing I like about this one is I fixed uh, one of the two by fours quite rigidly on the side and then I've just put a few screws in the back here. This is adjustable so you know you can unscrew it and widen it out to the full end or bring it in closer if needs be for different size bottles which is quite handy and um, there's a small bit of work in taking the screws out and lining it up and stuff but it's very solid. It's great for most size gin and whiskey bottles and I use this jig here to do these three in the background here and it was very easy. Um, so that's the jig. Um, there's a little scrap piece of 2x4 here, which slots in here. Um, just the reason for that is, when we're drilling, um, I use a little bit of, um, of water, um, just for the drill bit to lubricate it. Um, and this actually tilts the bottle up, so the water will run off. Um, and that's important because you don't want to get your nice fancy gin label um, soaked with water. The, 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 the labels on this bottle are paper too. So you've got to be careful with any liquid that you don't ruin the look of the bottle. Um, I have another little wedge here, just again another piece of scrap which goes in and then that just kicks it up a little bit further um, as you can see there. Um, so that will just give you a little bit of elevation so that we can, we can drill it. Uh, properly. Um, next item I want to show you is a little piece of Perspex that again I think this came out of a skip or it might have been a little bit left over from a previous piece that came out of a skip for making that sign. So um, basically I've drilled it with a little uh, 10 mil hole um, in the center which gives it, just you can see it right here, just with a standard drill bit, uh, steel or masonry or whichever is handy. Um, which gives it that guide. Um, so that basically then will sit on top of your bottle um, and it just gives a template to drill through. Um, now on its own it's not strong enough but it's just a guide and I like the Perspex because you can see through it. Uh, it well, it's fully recycled so you know it's something that's not the nicest material in the world but at least you're reusing it and you get a lot of use out of it. Um, and it saves it going to landfill or being incinerated. So what it um, does is just gives you a clear view down through, uh, like I was using timber, like ply and stuff, and you can't quite see. Um, so that just gives you a little bit of a view down to where you're going to be drilling. Um, so you don't need to go mad marking things out at the moment. Um, the next thing I want to show you is something that I picked up from Little, the supermarket, everyone will know. and um, this is a recent purchase and um, it's a diamond core drill bit with guide and that's important with guide. So if we open it up, you can see there's a, an assortment of drill bits in there. So we've got, um, check the sizes for you. You've got four, six, eight, ten, and 12 and these are diamond core bits. So that'll be very suitable for um, glass, ceramics, tiles, anything like that, super strong. Um, we're going to use the 10 mil one today, so we'll take that out. What's nice about this little set, I think it was about a tenner, if, I'm, if, if I can remember. It's a little bit dusty, so it was a while since I got it. Um, but what's great about it is it comes with a guide. So this is um, the guide, and that, um, it's just a piece of plastic. It's got a rubber suction pad on the back, so as you clip it like that it sucks and sticks to something flat so maybe if you had a tile in your bathroom you're going to drill or a sheet of glass that you're going to drill and um, that's very handy it's not necessarily going to work for us today because the bottle is curved so as you can see um 
doesn't really ad adhere to the bottle because it's curved. So hence the sheet of perspex, um, which we're going to line up the 10 mil hole on this. So as you can see, you just line it up and then we'll fix it um, and screw it in. So I'm just going to do that really quickly is lining up the hole um, on the table. So you want to kind of just get it so that, um, sorry, move that one over. I just want to be able to see it. Okay, so there, you can kind of see it there. So we're just going to line the hole up on with the perspex and then lock it into place. Happy enough with that. And you can just try with the drill bit loose, make sure it goes true okay. You can see there it's, it's working quite well. So that's just gonna give you a nice base to drill your bottle from. As I said, it's not the strongest perspex in the world. If you had a thicker piece than I've got here, this is probably one or two mil or one and a half mil. Um, that would probably be better. This is all I had at the time, so I just was using what I had. Um, the next step then is to fix this in place on the timber where you're going to drill. So um, you want to sort of line it up roughly. It doesn't have to be overly exact. And then power tool number one, our one and only power tool, your drill. Now, um, this is a fairly bog standard. I think my wife got it for me for my birthday in Woody's um, one year. So the Dewalt, a little bit more of an expensive brand, but any power drill will work. Um, you know, you just need to have something that has a little bit of a high speed on it. And um, one of the things I did note on the case of the drill bit set is that it requires a minimum speed of 2,500 RPM. Um, now that's high enough, and I think this drill puts out 2,200 RPM at, at a peak. So we'll see in a few minutes if it's effective. Um, I presume that's to do with the diamond core and the, the faster the, the, the blade is spinning, the more efficient it cuts, um, which we'll see in a few minutes. Um, so for now, I'm just going to pop a couple of little screws. I'm just going to pop four screws in the perspex and into the timber to keep it secure. And you don't have to go all the way in. You're literally just trying to keep it in place. Um, if you do go all the way in, you're likely to crack the perspex, unless it's really thick. Um, now, of course, as I said a, number, a couple of times already, you can use um, another piece of ply for this. Uh, the only thing to note is to make sure it's not too thick so that your bit goes down through it and hits your bottle. That's the only thing to be careful of there. Um, so, um, we'll slide our bottle back in. Now, I know we were talking about having this wedge in here for kicking up the height of the bottle. Um, that will come next. Um, for now, we want the bottle to be completely flat. Um, and then we can guide in our drill bit. Uh, now, I did bring some little scraps of cardboard. It's very handy. Um, as you can see, the bottle is not completely snug against the timber. Um, so what I'm going to do is just wedge in some little pieces of cardboard here to give it a bit more stability. So now it's not moving as much. Yeah, it's really secure. So now that's giving me good, um, a good strong base to work from. I'm actually just going to straighten it up. So um, let me move it so you can see it. There we go. I think you can see it good. There. So now I'm just going to look where we want the hole to be. Um, so I'm going to show you. Now, with gin, whiskey, bottles in particular, they're getting more elaborate as time goes on. The designs are improving. They're getting fancier. It's not always just a smooth, flat surface to work from. So I don't know if you can see on this one, just here, there's a couple of weird kind of notches. No idea what they're for. for. Um, and there's some, some dots on the back. I don't know if that's braille or something, maybe. 
Um, I've no idea, but um, and the, if anyone in the Q and A wants to pop in, they know what they're for. I'd love to know, so <laughs> fire it in if you do. Uh, they seem to be on a lot of the gin bottles now, but what is a little bit irritating is they um, they obstruct a nice clean straight hole at the back of the base. It's where you'd like to go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go up a bit, and we're going to just go um, just above that little notch in the center, which is kind of central. You want to try and get it looking quite aesthetically pleasing. So that's where we're going to go. Um, so now line it up. Okay, we get our little wedges of cardboard. Pop them in nice and secure. Okay, so I'm going to straighten it up one last time. So it's very important to make sure you're comfortable with where the hole's going to be and also um, that I'm actually lining it up on the wrong hole. <laughs> um, apologies. Okay, so I'm going to take out this little wedge. Now, now we're on the right hole. Um, that could have been embarrassing. So now, We'll pop our little cardboard back in. Yeah. Now you don't have to be overly accurate. I suppose I'm being a little bit sort of particular because I am quite particular that I want the hole to be in the center, but yeah, it's not massively important as long as you get a nice secure fixed base to operate on. So what we're gonna do is oh yeah, before I drill it, I want to show you a second drill bit set which I brought along today. This is a different style of, of uh, bits that are specifically for glass. Now I used to use these predominantly all the time um, because they're specifically for glass. So you can see they have a little arrowhead on them. Let me just pick that up there. Um, yeah, as I said, I used these for years. Um, a set like this I think it was a fiver from little these ones come from little um again you've got a three a four a six an eight and a ten and this one a mil diameter they're they're good i've just found that the diamond core bits are better and they work quicker and they cut a cleaner hole um it's funny with with, with a with a hand operated drill these work really well with a drill press they work really well these seem to work better with a drill press than by hand um, you get a lot of movement when you're using these by hand and it's hard to get it started properly um, in the right hole. Like if you're drilling a piece of metal, typically you'll have a pointer to start off and point a little hole and you can't do that really with the glass that I know of. Um, so yeah, I find the little diamond core ones are better. Um, now, I know people are probably going to say, well, like little and Aldi, I want to go and do this now. And, you know, they're specials and they're not always available. These are these are available in your hardware store too. So your Woody's, your your B and Q, your local hardware store. Um, there's online ones too, like Screw Fix and stuff where you can order and pick up. Um, so yeah, they're readily available. Um, they're not that expensive to have a set. Like as I said, I think it was ten or twelve euro for the set. Uh, definitely a little tool set. That's that's a must have if you're going to try and attempt this. So now we will put on our PPE. Again, the importance of your equipment. Um, pair of decent gloves. Um, you want to have your pair of glasses and your ear defenders. So we're all PPE'd up, ready to go. We're going to take off our um, screw bit and we're going to put in our diamond core bit. Now I'm just going to turn this around towards me um, for a second. So the idea of the Perspex and the guide is to just drill a starter hole um, and then we'll take that off and do it by hand then. Um, this will just give us a guide hole to start with. So I'm going to give it a small bit of lubrication with some So in this bottle here, we've got uh, water and a small bit of washing up liquid. Um, 
the washing up liquid, the little tip I picked up, um, it just gives an extra bit of lubrication to the bit as it's cutting through the glass. So um, you put a tiny little bit in, literally you don't need too much. Um, and then let's go for it. So now you want to have your drill on speed setting number two. If you're on speed setting number one, you're probably only pulling a thousand RPM or so. Speed setting number two on most drills will be upwards of 1800, 2000 RPM, which is what the, the set requires. Um, once we drill the bottle, I'll show you what that kind of looks like. Um, so this is going to be noisy for a second, but we're going to just um, start our pilot hole. Now, so we've started the pilot hole. Just a couple of seconds. You don't want to go too mad with it. Um, and that should give us enough to um, to go by hand. Um, I'm just going to have a little look at it. Yeah, I think we're okay. So at this point, we can take off our guide. And we'll swap back to our drill. Turn it back down to one. And onto the screw. Let's take this off. Now, I'll try and show you what we had as a result. So you can see where the hole has started and the white is the is dried glass. Um, another thing we're going to need at this point is a rag. It's always handy to have, um, which we have here. So you want to try and preserve the label as much as possible. It's not essential. But um, I think it's kind of nice to keep the label in condition. So now you can see what I'm talking about. We've started a guide on the hole. Uh, so hopefully now we can go by hand for the rest. You could try and use the, the guide to go the whole way through. Um, I find just though that you'll probably ruin the label because it's flat, the bottle is flat. Um, so at this point I'll typically fire in a little wedge and another little piece and we'll just kick it up so now you can see it's at an angle um, go that way now you can see it so you can see the bottle is is leaning up a little bit um, and what that will mean is when we spray some water on here it should flow down and off and uh, there's not going to be a whole amount of water but it just lubricates the hole as we're cutting it. So now we pop back in our cardboard. So we've got it nice and secure. So give it another little clean. Now we're ready to go. Now we just check that it's nice and secure. Now PPE back on. Take our screw bit out. That. We put our diamond core bit back in, switch it back to drill, onto two, and this is the fun part. So it takes some water, you get it a little bit wet. What I find you don't need loads. If you go with loads, you're going to have lots of leaking um, onto your labels. Um, you can, if you've got a really fancy label you can try and protect it uh, with some tape or just with some paper to try and just not um, let it um, soak into the label right so now we're going to have um, we're going to go for it and um, it's going to be a little bit noisy now for a couple of seconds so just bear with me I think I might try and turn it around this way so you guys get a better view of it okay and we're going to go for it so you can see little flakes of glass that are dry starting to pop out that's an indicator that you need a little bit more lubrication 
we go with a little wipe and then get a little bit more water in there and as i said the washing up liquid is is great so it's any kind of household washing up liquid a tiny drop in your bottle gives you um an extra added bit of lubrication <laughs> see the water's flowing down so it's not going to impact the label so we're getting quite close to the end of it now because a lot of the times when it chips or cracks is when the drill bit penetrates the final stage of the glass and um, so you just go very slowly at this point so we pop through so we clean clean the hole a little bit and that's the hole done Take out our little piece of cardboard. Take off our PPE. And now we can see, I won't even clean it, I'll show you. That's what you'll end up with. So you get your rag, give it a little wipe. And as we've seen at the start with our pre-drilled bottle and um, you've got a nice hole to work with 10 mil near enough to the center i'm very happy with that what you can do also now is um just use a little bit of your spray to clean off any of that soaked in gra glass always trying to keep stay away from labels and you can see now you've got a really clean finish on that um, I'm going to just give the little bottle a dust with the rag. Now, there will be one or two pieces inside the bottle too. So what you should do is put your gloves back on because it is glass. Pop it upside down and you can see, I always think this piece is, bit is pretty cool. I'll try and get it all out. So you can actually see the little shard of glass that came out from the um, from the inside of the bottle. Um, obviously try and recycle them, so into your glass recycling bin. Um, I'm gonna pop them here for now, but they should go somewhere out of reach of any small hands and into your recycling bin. Now one of the things I wanna talk about now for one quick second is, um, so once you've drilled the bottle successfully, uh, and it's clean, this bottle is black or dark in color. So one of the things with this is um, you don't see inside it. So you can't see what's after happening inside. But what does happen is with a clear bottle, you will get some uh, of that fine glass dust um, forming on the inside and you'll get some water too. So what I always recommend to people is give your bottle a wash out. You know, fill it full of water, watch your labels. Don't ruin your labels at this point after going to the effort of drilling it. Fill it up with water, wash it out leave it dry overnight if necessary um, and just get it clean on the inside. Um, with a clear bottle, you can see through it. So take this one for example. You know, you can see through it. So as best as I've tried to clean the inside of it, if you're very particular, you can still see some of the little bits of residue. It's very minute, but with a clear bottle, it is harder to, um, to get it sparkling clean on the inside. Um, luckily enough, a lot of the gin bottles and whiskey bottles now they are coloured, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Uh, even this tankery bottle here is green. It's a nice um, glass, green bottle of glass, which you know it's hard to see inside any of the the, the, the residue, um, which is good. So we're at that point now. Stage one complete. Uh, we move on now to the wiring um, stage, and um, so we're gonna uh, wire it with a 
three pin plug, UK spec or Irish spec plug, and also um, an on off switch. Very same as this one here. So literally on off and a connector on top for your bulb. Um, before we start the wiring, oh yeah, if, if anybody has any questions or points they'd like to raise or, or tips they'd like for this first stage, please feel free to fire them in the questions. We're going to try and get through as many questions at the end as possible. And as I said at the start, anyone who pops a question in is automatically entered into the giveaway. So you'll, you'll be able to walk away with this bottle today if we can make it. <laughs> um, so yeah, get your questions in. Um, so moving on to stage two, before we start with stage two, which is wiring, just want to re-emphasize, if you don't feel comfortable with any of the aspects of today's workshop, drilling, wiring, anything like that, or you're nervous of it, best thing to do is to steer clear from it, get some advice, or get someone who knows or is qualified in what they're doing. Um, you are going to be uh, wiring up an electrical product, so you got to be careful and follow and the instructions be confident in what you're doing and the last time we want any issues with anything so yeah if you're if you're not confident seek out the advice of someone who is or a qualified person and uh, right so we get into wiring so what we have is a whole set of little pieces for wire. the first one i'm going to talk about is the bulb holder so it's the bulb holder is the item that holds your bulb in place um, I've sourced these nice dark coloured kind of um, black almost gum barrel sort of coloured ones which are quite nice. These are shade rings which are quite handy. So any of the bottles we've made today you can use these rings to make put a lampshade on. Um, I quite like the exposed Edison bulbs. You can see if you look on my website all of my, my lamps have exposed but some people do like lampshades so they're very handy. Uh, one goes Top one goes bottom and they, they'll hold whatever lampshade you've got. Um, so that's basically the, the bulb holder. And as you can see on the back, it's a 10 mil connection. Um, so as we were saying with the whole, everything to do with lamps and lights is usually 10 mil. I think in times gone by and, and before we went metric, uh, it was half inch or, or, or imperial measurement was half inch, but everything's gone metric, so it's 10 mil. Um, you'll find with I'm going to say over 90% of all the lamps that are sold in some form or the other, there's a 10 mil connector in there somewhere. So it's the size to go for. Now, one of the trickiest parts with making the, the connector is fitting a bung or a plug into the hole on top. Um, I'll show you up close. So all bottles are different. You're going to have bigger, you're going to have smaller, you're going to have huge, you're going to have, you know. So what I've come up with, and this is completely my own creation, it's not something that um, you can buy bottle making kits. I suppose you could use the original cork and try and, um, you know, um, drill a hole in the original cork. I have tried that a few times and cork's very light and tends to fall apart anyway when you go and drill it. Um, some of the bottle caps that they have now are rubber bones in themselves. So you can drill through them. Some of the caps are nice and you try and make a feature out of it. So that is an option. And with this technique that I'm using, this is the little rubber bone that I've got. I think I got it from um, a company that does home brew kits um, and they sell little rubber bones. Uh, we might try and find the links to them at the end and, and paste them into the bottom of the workshop because I can't think of the name of them off the top of my head, but like rubber bones, they get them from, from science supply stores, laboratories, anywhere that's dealing with test tubes and lab equipment, always have little rubber bones and they're relatively inexpensive. Um, so that might come solid and you've got to drill a hole in it. So again, 10 mil all the way, we drilled a 10 mil hole in that. Um, so you can see then, I don't want to drop it in, but it fits quite well, but it moves. So it's not um, secure. So the idea here is to take some uh, all thread. So this brass guy here is called all thread. Um, it's an M10 thread, but with a narrower pitch that's specifically used with lighting. Any uh, electrical store will carry this. Um, and what's nice about it is it's hollow. So you can see you can thread a cable through it. That's called all thread. It's got a 10 mil nut for the bottom. You drill the 10 mil hole in the bone. The bone goes on to the all thread. 
a nice tight fit. And you want to leave a little bit. You want to leave about 10 mil on the top here to connect onto your lamp holder. So the, the, the nut on the bottom goes up flush to the bottom. Okay. And then I've just got a flat penny washer. Sorry, I get my hands all mixed up. So it's a penny washer. They're called penny washers. I'm sure there's a newer name for them, but that's what I know them as. Nice and thin. Uh, 10 mil diameter goes over the sorry goes over the top like that and that will just hug the bottle a little bit better now i'm actually going to move it down slightly yeah that's better so we get the 10 mil penny washer on top so that's your completed section there you've got your oil shred you've got your 10 mil nut you've got your rubber bung that you've drilled or your original cap and you've got your washer so if you had your original cap, you can replace this bung with your original cap and the rest goes through it. So the idea now is, I'm just going to get a screwdriver. This is your bulb holder. And the idea here is that this connects onto your little connector. Can you see? Yeah. Okay, so that's the bottom of your bulb holder, the 10 mil tread, female, and the male goes on. And it, sometimes inside these there's a little lock and screw. And if you can see it there. So you might just have to open the little lock and screw. It's just a safety precaution. Um you open out the lock and screw, and that should allow your base of your lamp holder to tread on. So that will tread on. You want to get it nice and tight. Now there'll be some adjustment here. So you want to adjust your bung so it's flush up against it on the washer. So now you can see there's flush. It's hand tightened. It's fairly tight. And then give your bung a little tighten. So now how this works is you got your top of your bottle. You've sized your bung. Your bung is in. And as you tighten it in and twist it, it expands inside the joint. I'm going to put on my gloves for a sec. So as you tighten, I'm not going to tighten it fully now because we just tried the cable through it, but as you tighten, righty tighty, lefty loosey, as you tighten it, the nut on the bottom pulls up and expands the bone. So it's a really clever, ingenious way to do it. And I'm holding it from the top there and it's really secure. You actually it's hard to, to pull out now. It's very effective. Uh, in terms of electrics, you know, you want something secure so that if someone comes along and lifts your bottle from the from the bottle hold, from the lamp holder, that nothing happens and it's nice and safe. Um, that's my own technique. I've created it from kind of experience and stuff. I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent. It's just a good way of, of doing it, using fairly easy uh, items. Um, yeah, but as I said, you know, experiment yourself and see, you might have a bottle with a really nice um, cork on it. Um, some of the champagne bottles or some of the whiskey bottles have really nice uh, corks. And it might be something to experiment with and see, you know, can I reuse that nice cork top? Um, or uh, some of them have bones. Um, really nice, expensive looking ones. So, you know, or you might get a nice pattern on the top of it. Um, I've even some some ones are wood. They've got the logo. They're really nice. So, you know, it depends on what bottle you're using, um, to, as to what you're going to do. I like this one. I think it's secure. It's safe. It's easy. Um, I'm going to take it out and show you one more time. So as you as you pop it out. Up. So you see it's very effective and you can see if I go up close yeah. you can see I don't know if you can pick that up but you can see the bone expanding maybe if I turn it that way so you see at the base here it's kind of expanding it's hard to see but it is so as you tighten it it expands so that's the the bulb holder and the top parts are electrical parts so we've got your live neutral uh, connection there connector and you've just got the shade ring on the top and um, that's for the bulb the next item i want to show you is the cable so we have some 
some black cable today. It comes in all different colors. I really like this um, uh, braided flex. So this is a, called a braided flex. It's a nice fabric coating on it. Um, comes in a lot of different colors. You know, as you can see behind us here, we have a lovely mustard yellow. We have um, a really nice burgundy as well. Uh, there's the mustard yellow and you've got a nice burgundy on the tankery bottle too. Um, so it comes in lots of colors. Again, you can get this from your local electrical retailer. Um, a lot more of them now are stocking um, fabric flex. Um, the twisted stuff is a little bit harder to get, but it is available. Uh, you'll get a lot of round flex too, which can, can work too. Um, this is live art neutral. So you've got the, and it's 0.75 mil square cable. So you're talking um, plenty for a lamp. Um, and uh, yeah, so what we're going to do is, I've just a, a, a meter and a half of it there. Um, one, of the, one of the most important items uh, in terms of safety then again after the, the lamp holder is um, a cord grip. Very basic piece of kit, but um, and so important for making sure there's no pull on the cable. So what this does is it'll, you feed your cable through it, you screw on the top and then the little plastic guys prong together and plug, pull your cable. So no one can pull your cable back out. Very important, um, in my opinion, to make sure that that's um, on, uh, secure. Ha Luckily enough, it comes in black too. You can get them in different colors too. So if you're matching up a, a yellow or a red or a green cable, you can pick these up in different colors. But they predominantly are black. Um, they're going to be at the back of the bottle, so it's not like it's not going to be something that's really seen, um, to be honest. So what I will do is um, start with the cord grip. So we're going to um, pop on the top and let that loose down the bottom there, and then just expand the little veins out a bit, and we're going to pop them on. I want to make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, top one's off. Sorry, I'm backwards with the camera. Um, that one goes on that way. Yeah, now I've got it. Okay, so you've got them on that way. And we're going to feed the cable down through the bottle. You could feed it up too, but you'll see in a minute why I feed it down. Um, it doesn't make any odds. So you're going to feed it down and thread the cable through the bottle. So. Put a little kink in it. You could go the other way. I'm probably being a bit awkward here, but um, you might end up going the other way too. It can be a bit tricky to see, especially because the bottle is dark. So now I've found the hole. Now we start coming through. Now you can see some of that dust from the inside of the bottle that I was talking about previously in the last stage. So you feed them through and then you can see there now it's popped out and we can put the top on and now you can see it's popped out put the top on and you don't have to tighten it fully for now but just get it going till it's sort of hand tightened so now your cable will still move through and I'll just show you, if you tighten it in fully, there will be no movement on that cable at all. So you can see, it's really secure. So we'll open it back up and thread our cable all the way through. As I said, you can use any cable, it doesn't have to be fabric. Uh, 0.75 square is the size you want to be going for. Um, for lighting. You could get away with 0.5, but 0.75 seems to be a nice um, thickness for the fittings and stuff too. So that's our case. I think that's fairly straightforward. A little tricky to thread it through, but once you have it found, it's easy. Core grip is on and tight, and we've left, I would say, about six inches just out of the top of it um, for our top connection to our lamp holder. So now we'll fit our little lamp holder that we've prefabricated. So we'll pop him on there. Okay, I'm gonna loosen the cord grip again, just to adjust. Yep. 
pop our gloves back on because we want to be fixing it for a final fix. And we want to just pop in our bone. Now you might need assistance with that, it's a little tight, but it goes in. And once it's in, if you give it a little tighten, as you twist, the nut on the bottom pulls up and tightens the bone super tight. You don't have to go mad. You know, and there you go. And there you've got your your bulb holder fitted, and you've got your cord grip at the back. So you know you're well on the way now to um the final stages of wiring. Um okay, so now so next stage is a plug, you need power supply. Again, just to emphasize, if you're not comfortable with any of this, you know, seek out somebody who is or, you know, find some advice yourself or, or, or get some help with it. Don't attempt anything you're not comfortable with, um, especially with electrics or any anything electrical. You've got to always have safety in mind and at the forefront and just, you know, if you're not comfortable, find someone who is and, and they can give you a hand with it. So I'm going to take out some tools Um, lots of little bits and pieces. Oh, I suppose I'll show you the plug first. Um, this is a standard um, triamp plug for lighting. There's a bit of a reflection on it. You can see it's the outside casing. The inside casing is a triamp fuse. You've got live, earth and neutral. And uh, now I know a question someone's going to ask at the end is, do I really need to earth it? Um, Simple answer to that is yes, because it's a metal lamp holder. Um, you know, you just want safety, air to everything. Don't take any chances with, with two core. Um, as long as it's aired, you're safe, you know. So always go safety first. I always air everything. So whether I need to or not, I've had electricians come in before and saying, oh, God, you're overkill there with the with the earth and stuff on some of my lamps. And I'm just like, you know, it's 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 better to be safe than sorry with these things. So always air it if you can. Um, so yeah, that's the plug. Um, I'm going to take out some tools. We've got lots of little pieces here. I'll show you each one um, as we use them. Now I want to just make sure you guys can see everything first. So. Them over that. Okay, so sorry, I just where you can see all the tools. Um, a couple more screws, and we've also got some screws. I'll pop these out here. Okay, so I think everyone can see mostly what's there. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give close ups of each thing as I'm using it. Um, so with the plug. First step, um, all, any plugs fitted should come with a cord grip, which is this little plastic guy here. Very important. Um, what that does is once it's fitted and tightened, it, it hugs the cable as it's going in. So as the cable goes in there, it goes underneath and that will screw in and hold the cable. Again, it's a, it's a, as it says, a cord grip, it stops. If anyone pulls the cable when it's plugged in, it just gives that extra uh, level of security to stop any live cables pulling out. Very important, always make sure if you're buying plugs that they have a cord grip. They have to buy the standards. So these um, these conform to a British standard, which is BS 1363 forward slash A. Um, that's the British standard, which everyone using UK based plugs, which is us included, has um, adopted. And as long as you follow that standard, I'll give it again, BS three six sorry bs one three six three a and usually that's written fairly prominently um on the plug um you'll see it on the back in this case i don't know if you can pick that up but it's there um so that's something to look for that will ensure that anything obviously it has the ce there too but um that will ensure that the plug is manufactured to a standard um, and it's not it conforms to standards and it's safe. 
Um, so with this, we've got our chord grip, we've got our three amp fuse here, and we have um, our three terminals. So we have live here, we have uh, neutral here, and we have earth up the top here, which is usually indicated by a little e. Um, so what I'm going to do is just open up each of the screw connections with a little um, size, I think that's a size 2, it's a PH1, PH1 screw head. Um, open it up. So again, you know, I'm after lining up a load of tools. People are probably rolling their eyes and going, "Ah, you know, <laughs> I don't have half of these tools." A lot, a lot of these aren't necessary. They're things I use, and I'll go through them now. Like a, a basic uh, little Aldi VDE screwdriver, electrical screwdriver set. Which what these are, part size. Um, I think they're like six quid, seven quid, eight quid. They're less than a tenner anyway. And you can get all the sizes of flathead and, and Phillips or, or PH screw screwdriver heads. That'll last you for years. You know, it's a great investment and they're insulated, they're safe. Um, multitude of uses and handy to have. Again, you know, you're talking less than a tenner for a set of eight to 10 screwdrivers. Um, very handy to have, especially if you're doing any electrical work. You know, you can find the screws can be different size heads, they can be PH1, they can be PH2, they can be flat heads, different sizes of flat heads. So it's, it's, it's important to have um, the right tools for the job. Um, so once we have our three terminals open, um, the next thing I want to show you, some of these things now aren't 100% necessary, but they just make the job um, professional. Right, thought I lost it. So this guy here, is a little cable gripper. I call it, a, I don't know the actual name for it, it's a rubber grommet, I suppose, would be what I'd call it, a rubber grommet. The way this goes is, get your cable, goes in over the top, and let it hang down loose. And I'll show it, we'll come back to that in a minute. So we'll leave it hang down loose, and we'll come back to him in a minute, because he fits into the plug, or she, sorry, I'm very bad at <laughs> making my he's and she's, but, um, so yeah, a good snips. Um, or side cutters, if you're being technical. Again, I think these are a little bit more of an expensive brand, but it's like anything with snips, you'll pay for what you get, and um, they'll last you. I have this set five years, I've never changed it, so that'll just go straight wired, close, to, I'd say I've wired nearly 500 lamps now, um, and um, or more, possibly, but they um, are perfect. So you will get life out of them if you, if you buy buy a decent set if you're going to be doing a lot of wiring and stuff. Um, so I'm just going to trim the terminals. Give you a nice clean connection on it. Um, now some other things that I use. Again, these are these are just things to finish out the terminals. They're not necessary, but they do give a nice finished uh, look. Um, before I do that, I just want to show you a handy little tip. Um, yeah. So, with most plugs you buy, and <laughs> being reused months and um, trying to not throw things out, this is a little backer from a plug. Uh, hang on, till I find the camera. Back a bit, and the light shining on it. There we go. Anyway, I think you get the idea. This is from. It's usually the first thing that goes in the bin or the recycling when you buy a new appliance. There's, there's one of these little cards um, on the back. I think you can see it there now, look. The light's funny here, so it's shining on it. So you can see there, there's a clear picture of exactly how to wire the plug, which is really handy. I bet you loads of people didn't know that. They just go straight in the bin or they stay on the plug. Um, you're not supposed to leave it on the plug, I don't think. I think it has to come off, but typically speaking, all the information you need to wire the plug is on the back there. Now that might mean a lot to a lot of people, but you know, it gives you the length, 22 mil, 34 mil, 12 mil, um, and live earth neutral. And the colors too, green or yellow for, green and yellow or green for earth, black or blue for neutral, and brown or red for live. So like that's a really handy little piece of kit, just hold on to it, keep it. Um, it's a good reference point um, to come back to just basic wiring of the plug, which an awful lot of people I'd say would put their hands up and say, God, I wouldn't even know where to start and wearing a plug. And it's quite simple. Um, so I'd hold on to that. It gives you good information on it. 
Uh, so back to the plug, uh, uh, to the wire. We will uh, find the three terminals and just untwist them a little bit. We want to go with our earth first. Now I have some little rubber, what I, I call these bicycle tubes, but they're, they're heat shrink. So this is just a little rubber core uh, or heat shrink, heat shrink tube. Again, I got these in, you, you'll think I just live in Little and Aldi, but I got these as a set, one of those little square sets with hundreds of different sizes in it. I think it was a fiver and they've lasted me like nearly a year. Just chop them all up into little sizes. And what you do with that is you pop it on over the fabric like so. And then you can pull your fabric back. Now next to the wire strippers. Essential if you're doing wiring in my opinion. This is one variation of it. You put your cable in. Yeah. You can make sure you can see. You pop it off. And then you can see it's isolated out the um, copper core of the, of the cable. Um, another addition that's not necessary. You'll see a lot of people just twisting them with their fingers. That's fine. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, what I like to do is just crimp the cables. So you'll get a little ferrule. These are called boot lace ferrules. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a ferrule or a ferrule. And basically it's like, it's like the top of a shoelace. And I think that's why they call them boot lace. Um, it's like just the top of a shoelace. And what that does is just goes, oh, it's metal. It's made of, of aluminum, I think. And it just pops over the top of your terminals, like so. And then I have a separate tool here called a crimper. So you can see this guy, one of my favorite tools, it's kind of cool, and it crimps it. So we pop it in, like so, and then you can see then a lovely clean. There might be a little bit of copper extrude yeah, sticking out from the end. If you just trim that off, so it's neat and tidy. And then you've got a, a very adequately finished terminal. Pull your little rubber um, heat shrink back up, and then you just want to get a little lighter. Again, safety first. You know, this is a safety lighter for lighting candles, um, and then just give it a little, a small little heat. Two seconds on the flame. It doesn't need to be much, and you've got a really professionally finished terminal. Now, overkill, I will admit, but I just like it. Like it that way. It's 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 clean. There's no frayed fabric from the cable, and it's 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 more professional looking um, finish. So now you can measure these out with your little card exactly. Um, I'm kind of used to doing it by hand. So what I typically do, if you want a tip, another tip is line up your neutral cable next. So your blue with your earth. And you want to trim it right where the end of the ferrule meets the yellow and green. Near enough, doesn't that be bang on? And then you want to pop a trim on that. And then another little rubber, rubber guy. Again, you want to terminate it. And crimp it. Give it a little two seconds with it. So now we've got two done. Last one to do is the live, which is the brown. Again, line the tree of them up. You can see there. It's hard to see, but you can kind of see. Line the third one up and then brown off there, the bottom of that one. Again, as I said, you can measure them out if you really want to be kind of particular about it. Follow the instructions exactly. Um, again, crimp it, or sorry, trim it. Get your ferrule. Pop your ferrule on. Now, if you're just careful when you're popping your ferrule on that you don't get any loose strands. It's not overly critical, but you don't want a short circuit or anything like that. And then crimp it. Need a trim, give it a trim. That. Okay, so that's the third one done. A little bit of heat on the heat shrink. 
and you've got your three plug terminals done. So you can see that's the bulk of the work when it comes to wearing a plug, having the three of those guys done. I'm gonna just redo your, your braid so that it's nice. Um, now, get your plug. Here we are again. Sorry, everything's mirrored, so I'm doing this backwards. Um, your earth goes, I always start with the earth because it's the longest one. Your earth in top. And you screw it closed. Now with these, you don't have to go mad with the tightening. It just has to be tight enough. And pull it to see if it comes out. Next is your neutral. Go mad again. And lastly is your light. Got your three terminals inside. Try and get you a close look at it. Lie very neutral. What I should have said is the, the little heat shrink. Leave it back a little bit so you can still see the color. Uh, just for the next person, if anyone's coming along to open it up and service it or change it so they can see. Now back to this little rubber grommet, Wallace and grommet. He, this one slides up and then sits into the channel here. Just like that, and then you can straighten up your cables inside so that they're all secure. And then, if we just have a little look at our picture again, the light shining on it, I might just twist this bit away or something. Okay, that's better. So, there you can kind of see it there now. Um, is it okay? Um, yeah, so that's near enough exactly the way it is. Last job, put in the cord grip. So you have a little screw for the back of it, which goes through. Probably the most important bar in having the terminals in the right holes is the cord grip, in my opinion. It just is a really good layer of safety. And uh, this is a PH2 screwdriver head. What I find sometimes with the cord grip, they are quite tight, so you want to just get a flat head on it get it in nice and tight and you can see now what I'm talking about the grommet seals it off really nice gives it a professional looking finish and everything's wired adequately inside secure pop our little lid back on and our fixing screw and in we go you don't want to go too mad with this one um, it is a plastic connection, so you don't want to over tighten it and crack the plastic, but hand tighten a little bit more. It's your plug wired. Nice and secure. So that's step one. Step two, we're going to do the um, connector on the bulb holder on top. Again, very similar. Um, we'll give some slack to allow it to um, get some slack on it. We're going to trim the terminals on top, live at neutral again. And um, to show you what way this works then is this guy. So that's a ceramic bulb holder in, in insert. So you can see on the bottom here, that's where when you screw your light bulb in, the center hits the center here, which is the live, and the side of the screw hits the neutral here. And that creates your, your link. Um, the guy on this guy here is an earth terminal, which actually flexes over and touches the outer casing, kind of like that, but on the inside, which earths the metal holder. Uh, which is very safe and secure. You get a lot of these, and if you look at a lot of lights you have that are just too core, and they might have a plastic lamp holder. Everything's plastic now, so you know you, your cheap 20 quid light you might pick up in IKEA or places like that. You know, I guarantee you most of it's made out of plastic. It'll have a plastic insert like this, it'll have a plastic bulb holder, and that'll mean it just negates having to earth it, which saves obviously money. Um, I like the look of these bulb holders I think they're quite quite uh, quite nice and they're a little bit more expensive like one of these you're probably going to pay five six euro maybe a little bit more under a tenner for 
plan to go on the couple of quid. Um, but I just, you know, if you're if you're doing this, you might as well put, you know, you're not paying out for the bottle. Uh, you got the enjoyment of drinking the gin or the whiskey. So you know, it's 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 not going to cost you the world to go up a little bit and have something a little bit nicer. Um, so with the with the terminals, um, again, you just want to open the tray up. Again, PH1 on the head on this screwdriver. So each one on the back correlates to one of the terminals on the front. Live, neutral, earth. On the back then, live, earth, neutral. So, you know, follow that quite precisely. Um, you don't, cause you're mirroring it, you don't want to switch it upside down. The, the live, the, the earth is easy. And um, that's on the top there. It's the live and the, uh, they're not labeled. So, you know, you just gotta be a little cautious there. The live is always the one which goes over to the center of the bulb holder. The neutral is always the one that's smaller or shorter and goes to the side. Um, again, if you're unsure ever of anything like this, always ask. Don't take a chance, especially with electrical stuff, always ask. Um, so we've trimmed our terminals. We've prepped up our insert. Uh, all we got to do now is um, uh, tidy up these terminals. Now with this, I try and get a little side profile on it. You can see that the earth terminal is higher uh, on it than the live and the neutral. So what we'll do is we'll trim the earth a little bit just so it fits quite nicely in. So I'll just cut 10 mil say off of the, the neutral, or sorry, the live. Sorry, wrong choice, the uh, earth, the yellow and green one. So we'll pop on our little uh, rubber uh, heat shrink. As I said previously, you don't have to do it, but it just tidies it up so nicely that I, I would recommend it. And you get a ferrule. Now we'll crimp it. Watch your fingers with the crimper. You know, the last thing you want to do is crimp your finger. Uh, a little bit of heat for two seconds, then our live, our brown, and our blue, which is our neutral, are both the same length. And just get a little bit of heat shrink, pop that on. And then we will crimp it. As I said, with the plug, leave a little bit exposed just for the next person or for you, so you can identify it easily. And um, I suppose the crimper and the wire strippers are two things that are readily available now. Um, any electrical store worth or salt will have them, or a lot of people do is buy them on the internet. You can get them from Amazon, eBay, places like that. They're really inexpensive. Expensive. Um, this guy, I think, twenty quid. He's a little bit there, um, and the uh, wire strippers. I think they're about fifteen, twenty quid as well. So they're good investments. They're like your snips, um, or your side cutters. You know, if you're going doing this, they're they're the three items that you want to put a small bit more money into because you will get the use out of them. Um, plus, as well, like when I started out, twisting copper cables there's lots of little fine wires and twist them with your fingers like this do it a couple of hundred times and your skin starts to fall apart so um you want to try and do it efficiently and um preserve your skin too so it doesn't go all, all um cut and um, now so there we have our three terminals i lift it up for you can see it's left a little bit exposed you've got live is brown earth is yellow and blue is neutral um, okay, and now we're going to put on our connector, our bulb holder. So you just pop in your live, you pop in your earth, and you pop in your neutral. Again, just, just hand tighten, not go mad with it. Retwist our cable up, and then that'll pop straight down and in. Now with that, there's a little 
there's a guide on the um on the bulb holder so you can see these little dots on the side of it so you want to line them up with the channels on your your um ceramic bulb holder and that just sits in once that sits in you screw it on now you don't want to little tip you don't want to just go at that with one hand because you're going to end up tightening overly tightening the bone and uh, you want to hold one hand on the base and then tighten it on the top just so you're not putting too much pressure on your bone and um, you don't want your bone being so tight that it pops out like a, a champagne cork or something and um, it won't but yeah you just want to make sure it's in so then that's in nice and secure got it all wired up just want to check that it's secure and tight and the last stage is a switch so here we have today we're just going to use a basic on off switch you can use dimmers i'm renowned for using dimmer switches there was probably a little bit too much work in that for today's workshop um, you could nearly do a, a workshop on dimmer switches alone and um, but an on off switch is plenty sufficient um, and um, yeah I, I i like using them i think they are I think they uh, they're very uh, they're very handy and easy to wire. So to show you, that's our on off switch. Um, there's loads of terminals and connections in it. So this is a more expensive one. I think these are about six or seven euros. But basically, they'll allow you to connect live, earth, and uh, sorry, neutral earth and live, and they're labelled. So if you look, you very hard to see, but if you look really closely, you can see them. They're labelled. Um, what i tend to do with these is remove the uh connector for the live and the sorry not the live for the neutral and the earth because you don't need to split that cable it can just run straight through it um it's just something that i've come across over the last few years you don't necessarily always need to cut your cable it's 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 more so safer when it's um uncut as well so i remove the brass connector for the for the uh, neutral and for the air. So that then just leaves our uh, live connectors. So we'll cut the live, we'll tree, trim the cable back, pair it up, and then we'll connect in here. And we'll run the neutral and we'll run the air just down the channel. Um, and that's perfectly safe. Okay, so um, suppose first thing we'll open up the terminals. These are quite deep. And the way the switch works is it literally connects it on, connects it up or disconnects it. So that's the, the rocker on the switch on, off, on, off. It's literally just interrupting the live supply. Um, okay. So now, a little, little tricky to find. You might probably questions at the end saying, how do you find the live? You, you, it's trial and error. So, you know, figure out how far away from the, from the bottle you want your switch. Typically speaking, don't go too far. When it's on a table or something, you want to be able to reach down and turn it off. So I usually go, you know, I'd say about eight or ten inches uh, from the bottle. And then just isolate out one at random. And you have a three in one chance of finding the right one. Now this is a little really sharp scalpel. Um, anything, a Stanley or anything will do. You're basically just trying to cut the fabric only. So really lightly cut around the fabric. Don't cut into the cable and try and just find which one it is. Are we lucky? Are you guys lucky today? Yes, you are. So that's brown. So we know that's the live. Um, and then give them a trim. Now, so we've, always, we've found the live, we've left the earth and the neutral um, intact, and we're just gonna trim it so that we have a nice neat finish on it. So we want to just pair off, I would say in millimeters, again, probably around 10 or 15 mil off either end. So that it goes in nice and neatly. So say about 15 mil off either end. And then that will go in. So we'll dress our, our terminals. Again, use your wire strippers, get your ferrule. Of 
print. Now the he's can uh, he's shrink strippers and ferro. And your crimper. And that's it. Again, leave a little bit sticking out so you can see the color. It's got brown and brown. We'll connect in our terminals. Make sure they're in fully. Flat head on this one. Bigger flat head. And other side. Yeah, you can see you have left a nice bit, nice and neat. Sit down in the channel on one side. Now these guys are really good. They, they come with a cord grip too, which we took off at the start. We can refit the cord grip. Can be fiddly this bit. So just be patient and take your time. It's important to get the cord grip on um, adequately. And then the other side too. I'd nearly go as far as saying that these particular switches don't necessarily need it. When you close the cover, it typically grabs the cable so tightly that it's a little bit overkill. But you can see there now with the core grip on, your really, really strong connection there. It's good. Um, and on the far side then, we're nearly finished. It can be tricky, as I said, to find this, but once it's started, it's okay. And that's good. Screw. So tighten your cord grip, both sides, really, really secure and safe. Recoil your cable if needs be, straighten it up, and then put your lid back on. As I said, look at the way the lid grabs the cable too, so like really, really solid switch these ones. And on the back you pop in your, your screw. And another screw. And then I'll show you. Finished switch. Sorry. Now you can see your switch then on off, fully connected. And that is that. We are done. So lastly then you want to test it. And um, we have a nice LED bulb here. Let's grab it. Again, a lot of questions at the end might be around bulbs, and we can address that in the QA at the end with people as to where you get your bulbs. Um, these you'll see are starting to become really, really available. A few years ago, they were hard to get, you know, people would come to you and like it'd be tricky to find them in places and stuff, but recently they're popping up everywhere. They're in your local hardware store, your local electrical store, and um, they're kind of everywhere. So um, I'll just plug it in and we'll see how successful we have been. There you go, guys. And we are finished. Thanks, everybody. And I hope you enjoyed today's workshop. And if there's any questions that people might have, please feel free to fire them into the Q&A. And yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. So as strange or unusual as the questions may be, get them on and we'll try it. We'll try our best to uh, answer them all. And also don't forget, anyone who asks a question is automatically entered into the draw. And the winner is going to pick a random and win this round. So best of luck and thanks for watching today.
Thank you, thank you very much, Alice. You made it look so easy, that was so slick. Um, getting that there in an hour and a half was, was fantastic. Uh, and yes, there's loads of questions. Uh, let me see if I can get them up here. Uh, apologies for the lag there at certain times, guys, live TV. Um, so what do we have? Let's see. Um, I'm gonna show this one here. So uh, Kathy, let's bring Emmett back in. Sorry, Emmett, where, where have you gone? Okay, yeah, hi, Emmett. Um, so if, thanks again. Um, let's get you some questions there. So uh, Kathleen, could we get a list of all the materials and tools used? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm going to do up a list in a PDF format and um, possibly also a list of uh, a little bit more detailed instructions for people to follow. Um, I'll do it over the 10 weeks and keep an eye on my Instagram the website just to see that popping up. Um, if anyone wants to contact me directly, they're more than welcome to see um, my Instagram and website. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, but yeah, the list will be available in a couple of weeks and with some detailed instructions. Brilliant, thanks a lot. Uh, uh, we're going to over, guys. We said we finished the tour, but let's just try to get through a few questions first. Apologies if um, the sound is after a bit messed up. Guys. Um, so, uh, Victoria, will there ever be uh, any chance of doing this in real life? Yeah, for sure. It's something. Um, it's something I've thought about over the last few years, and um, hopefully, I think um, th th this side of Christmas maybe it's unlikely, but it is something I'm thinking about for um, 2022. So. Watch this space, keep an eye on the channels. We hopefully will have uh, maybe like a demonstration workshop where you can come and attend and watch in person um, the lamp being made. So I think that would be better to people. So keep an eye out, keep keep an eye on mywaste.ie, keep an eye on the Rediscovery Center. And um, yeah, watch this space. We hopefully will be doing something very soon. Great, thank you very much. Uh, Carmen asked, would it be possible to adapt this workshop to make a lamp with any other objects? Absolutely, absolutely. It's a great question. Um, yeah, you can use the techniques shown today in with any uh, items. Um, I just put a, a, a note of caution to make sure you're you're using something that has the required weight in it. You know, you don't want something too light at the bottom. So um, you want it to be able to hold the light in place. But absolutely, and if people do come up with some unusual, strange objects, please send them on. I'd love to see them. Um, I'd love to see some of the wacky, strange, unusual things people come up with, and that's the look too, because it's 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 it can be tough too to make figure it out. Brilliant, thank you very much. And uh, we've also asked, interested in making a lamp using large piece of driftwood. Hoping this class will give me some tips. Any any tips for them? Yeah, I, I I have made lamps before from pieces of driftwood. Um, driftwood's amazing. You know, it's beautiful material. It's been battered and bruised by the sea and you get some beautiful soft smooth finishes to it one tip i would give is that uh, necessarily you don't necessarily need to drill through the driftwood driftwood is quite unusually shaped and has some interesting branch kind of structures on it what you can do is possibly tie the cord around some of the branches and leave the bulb hang down um which is quite nice too that'd be a, my main tip with driftwood um but yeah absolutely it's a beautiful material Great, and now from Rebecca, can I ask about the bubbles um, that do not heat up or burn if possible? Uh, she makes organic pieces and would like to incorporate them into the lamp designs using old magazines. Any uh, tips? That's a great question too. Um, so on the market at the moment, there's there's more or less it's reducing to one type of bulb, an LED. With the LED bulbs, they're not like your traditional old-fashioned um, incandescent bulbs they don't produce heat from the filament. They do produce heat down here at the um, socket. So that is the area to be cautious of. It's not ever going to be hot enough to burn paper, um, but it does, you know, it's easy to switch. It's not like your old 100 watt incandescent bulb that will burn your skin. Um, as long as you go LED, um, you're safe. So moving on then, for, uh, Emma, what kind of bottles are best to make as lamps? Yeah, that's a good question too, and we touched a little bit on it in the, in the um, demonstration. Um, I like gin bottles, whiskey bottles. The spirit bottles tend to be a, a thicker construction, so they're a heavier bottle. The thicker the glass, you know, the easier it should be to, um, to drill it. Be careful with wine bottles. 
they're very th- some of them now are very thin and if they can smash champagne bottles too can be tricky um to to get right slow and steady wins the race when you're drilling it uh, don't force it take your time and you should be able to drill any bottle really it, i i've even done a vinegar bottle so you know the thinnest one you could imagine now listen it's very obvious that you uh work for peter for uh little and Aldi, but with that in mind uh, the question came in from the feature kid where do you call your lighting hardware for apps yeah so all the lighting hardware is sourced um either locally from local electrical wholesalers and uh, the vast majority of the stuff comes from them i do buy certain items in bulk i buy light bulbs and cable in bulk from a company in italy so i'm very kind of conscious that things come from the eu if i can and um you just want to be careful that things are CE certified they've got the relevant standards um, and they're manufactured accordingly but Generally speaking, as I was kind of going through in the workshop, I you know, I tried to keep this workshop about affordability and all of the things today were bought from local hardware stores. So your local electrical wholesaler would be a good place to start. Super. Um, let's see. Uh, Hot Blondie asked, can you use a wine bottle with a smaller bowl? Can you use a wine bottle with a smaller bowl? Yes, of course. Um, this is just the bowl that I felt matched up with um with the with this lamp you can put any bulb at all these are e27 fittings on the bulb and an e27 connection so any bulb with an e27 connection can go in and um, the only thing to note if you're using a dimmer switch be a little bit careful that you get a bulb that is dimmable um, or you might get flickering but for on off it's literally any bulb that fits in an e27 um fitting thanks Alex. can i just check can you hear me Say again. Are you able to hear me okay, no? Um so just a, a question there from uh, Fiona about would you consider selling a kit with all the bits that you need to make it up? Yeah, um from doing the doing the demonstration as this is one of the first demonstrations I've ever done, so it's been uh, exciting and interesting for me as well to, to do it. And one of the big things which has come from us and a good few questions I think uh, of a similar vein. So what we're gonna do is um, come up with some lamp kits. So um, I might come up with some different um, cord colors and switch options, bulb options, different colors. And um, so again, watch this space. Keep an eye on coppercreation.com. Keep an eye on Instagram and any channels that you follow me. And as soon as I have them available, I'll be uh, shouting about them. And yeah, it's a good question, and I can, it can be a bit fiddly some of the wiring parts. So yeah, it's, it might be nice to offer a, a, a pre-wired solution for it. Okay, that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant news. Thanks very much, Emmett. Look, we, we probably only have time for another couple, so let's let's move on as quick as we can. So Andrew asked, can you use all fittings from disused light bulbs or lighting? Absolutely. Absolutely. So as long as your light was functioning, um, you can electrically test it with a multimeter if needs be. But if the light was functioning, um, absolutely no reason not to. And it's a great question for reusing. So, you know, if you've got all the light in the shed or the attic that hasn't been used in a number of years, take it apart, don't be afraid. And um, try and read the table, the plug, the switch, the bulb holder, and, you know, you've got nearly everything you need there to, to make a new lamp. Um, as I said, in the demonstration, if you're unsure or nervous about anything, always ask someone qualified to just check over for you. Great, okay, let's say one more, one more question for you there. Um, is, is it possible to have, sorry, I have asked that one already. Um, uh, sorry, I missed the question there. Uh, do, 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 do. Nope, nope, it's gone. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'll tell you what we'll, we'll do, Adam, is we'll move on to the, um, the, the winner. So we've entered everybody who asked a question, we've entered into a, a, a randomizer web page, and somebody has won. I don't know who it is, Emma, do you know who it is? Yeah, I do. I think it was uh, Vicky is the winner. So best, thank you, Vicky, for your question. And also, um, congratulations. Um, so to pick up your your prize, which is this lamp, pop into the Rediscovery Center here in Valley Mall, and um, the, the lamp will be available at the secondary pickup. So congratulations, well done, and I hope you like your new lamp. 
Thanks very much for that and thanks again and it's a look at this then now. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this as much as I certainly enjoyed watching it anyway and thanks again to Emma for giving up his time to do this master class with us today and answer any questions. If anybody does have any more questions for Emma, I'm sure you'd be very happy for them to get in contact with you and to follow you on uh, your social media. So you want to just give out one more shout out there Emma just to help people can find it. Yeah, thanks. And um, just to say thank you, Ed and the team here for, for the demonstration. It was great fun doing it. I think it was, it was uh, 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 hopefully it was entertaining for people and people picked up some stuff and uh, knowledge from it. Um, you can get me at coppercreation.com. That's the case. You can get me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. There's at coppercreation with the case, just like this. And um, send me a message. I'm very approachable. You can ask me anything directly. You know, trying to ask me. Thanks again, Ed, and the team here. It was, it was a, an enjoyable thing. Thank you very much, Alan. And look, mostly thanks to everybody uh, who took part. This wouldn't have been as much fun if it wasn't for all the uh, really good and interactive questions. Uh, we've really enjoyed doing this, and, and, and big thanks to the uh, Southern uh, Waste Region Office as well for hosting this event today as part of my waste, uh, as, as, as part of uh, we used them on my list already. So make sure and check out my list already for more activities that's happening. The month's not over yet, and there's a very special furniture masterclass happening next Thursday, same time, same place. So we'll see you all then, hopefully, uh, and enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye.